let's do a quick talking head video about mitochondria. Mitochondria is kind of like the buzzword of 2017 heading into 2018, but many people just talk about supplements for fixing and supporting mitochondria, but they're not addressing the root cause of the root cause. If you get an organic acids test, which is something I run on every new client, I'll put a screenshot up here of a section of mitochondrial health where you can see dysfunction. We would come in and we would use things like carnitine and ribose and possibly creatine and some B vitamins and other nutrients and things to fix and support mitochondrial health. But is it truly just a deficiency of these nutrients that fuel the Krebs cycle? Possibly not. There could be other deep hidden causes that you have to investigate and you have to find and fix. So this could be parasites, this could be bacteria, this could be the fungus, the yeast. Any type of issue going on in the gut can affect nutrient absorption. If the nutrient absorption is affected, let's say you've got H. pylori, which is a bacterial infection. What that does is that suppresses your stomach acid levels. If stomach acid goes low, your grass-fed meats and your pastured meats that you're eating, they're not going to be digested and you're not going to have the nutrients you need to fuel the mitochondrial cycle called the Krebs cycle. If that happens, you're going to be fatigued. So that doesn't mean you just need to pop a five-hour energy or some even a natural or organic energy drink. No, that means you've got to figure out why is this cycle not being fueled and it could stem from a hidden infection. And then number two is going to be chemical toxicity. So this can include heavy metals, so your mercury, your lead, your arsenic, your cadmium, your aluminum. You can get a blood metals panel through Quicksilver and figure out what are your levels of toxic metals. If you have a problem, I'm not uh, of the thought that you need to go for the metals straight away. I like to heal up the gut first, make sure that we've sealed up a leaky gut. If we've got a leaky brain, a blood-brain barrier that's permeable, we want to fix that. I'm just not a huge fan of doing a detox right away. So put heavy metals on the back burner, but you do want to get that investigated. And then number two in the chemical category is going to be your other chemicals that come from food and environment. So if you live in a super urban area, you've got a lot of gasoline and diesel fumes outside of your home, that can come into the home. There's plenty of literature about the health implications of living too close to a busy road or living too close to a major highway. So if you can, move. Get the heck out of there. Get away from a super urban area. It's not healthy. It's not. Not to mention the electromagnetic pollution. When the literature is not clear on how cell phone radiation and Wi-Fi and cell phone towers affect mitochondria, but I'm sure that it does because I've noticed that when my clients live in New York City, they go out to the countryside, all of a sudden their energy level doubles overnight and we didn't change anything else in the protocol. My opinion is that these wireless technologies are the new smoking and the literature is just not going to catch up for another 10 or 20 years. So mitigate EMF is going to be huge and then going organic, lastly. If you've got glyphosate in the diet, we know glyphosate's damaging mitochondrial function. So if you combine non-organic food with gut infections, with gasoline additives, with environmental exposures, with living right next to an airport where a lot of jet fuel is being burned, using aluminum in your skincare products, including your deodorants, you know, these all add up and affect mitochondria. So my advice is, yes, use the supplements, fix and support mitochondrial health, but make sure you're digging to the root cause of the root cause. I hope this makes sense. If you'd like help, you can click below and I'll talk with you again soon. Take care. Bye-bye.